Hello. Um, I have a question. Nope. I'm Carlos. No questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. What? I thought this was the Q and A. It is. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. My question is about how to approach better the local values. It's a good question. Yeah. How to approach better the local values and to do a better brush, uh, brush strokes, accurate brush strokes. All right. I have, I have solutions for you. Just give me one second. Okay. going to start gathering some reference. Um, so the way that you should think about, we'll focus on one thing. So local values, right? Local values, um, are actually relatively simple. You just got to keep it simple. That's a, a point that a lot of people do not do. Okay. And so let me show you. I'm going to take a break from gathering reference and just show you just a second. <clears throat> so what people tend to do um, is a few things. So this is one of the things that they do. They'll never kind of leave one set of value ranges. They'll just kind of stay around here. And they're like, okay, now he's wearing a dark shirt, but it's not, oops, it's not that it's darker. It's just darker value compared to everything else, but it's not that it's darker. You're gonna be, right, now I'm going to give him a lighter helmet. And again, it's not that it's lighter. It's just lighter comparatively, you know? Yeah. So that's like the first thing that people tend to do. And then here's what it should look like. If you wanted some real contrast. Oh, it's my problem. I always use it's very like gray, everything. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference, right? Yeah. <laughs> when I said it was darker and, and lighter, it was comparatively. But this is obviously the more ideal, right? Yeah. So you just got to be very aware of that. That's all. You just got to like be able to just separate. So what I used to do, uh, I used to use Copic markers and I would have like a 20% value. Uh, I would have like a 50% value. And then I have like 90%. Well, and this this is like like eighty percent brightness this is around fifty percent, and this is around ten percent brightness. Let's find out. Let's see where we're can at. I ask what is a brush? Is uh, so what do you just do? You just paint one brush and it's became dark so and the, dark. yeah, just a second. So this is eighty percent, as I've told you. This is right around fifty. I was off by ten percent, and this is about ten twenty. So I was off again by about ten percent. But I was pretty close, just by guessing. And to answer Vitaly's question, what did I do? Well, I just paint lightly, and then I pick the value, and paint middle, paint the value, and then paint dark, and paint the pick the value. This is definitely ten percent. This is not. So let's let's bring it a little bit lighter. So this should be. It should be 50%. Let's find out. Yep, 50% exactly. See that? Yeah. But see what I just did there? Um, to Vitaly's surprise. Yeah, I just don't <laughs> get how you do it. Is that I just know exactly the percentages by just looking at them. But what is this brush? Why I just uh, it's took just a It's just a round light. brush. It's just a round brush. No, it's just a round brush. It's the basic brush that comes out of Photoshop. There's nothing special about it. What you're, what you're experiencing is skill. It's like watching somebody juggle chainsaws that are on fire. Mm -hmm. 
Like, if they were to just say, oh, yeah, you just got to juggle chainsaws and fire, you'd be like, what? No. There's obviously steps before that, aren't there? And there is. And this, you got to juggle just regular stuff first, like balls, you know? And so what I'm trying to say is that when you have to understand this, you know, like, like this is just a brush that can go from light to dark. That's it. There's nothing fantastic about this brush. You guys all have access to this brush. You guys can make this brush yourself. It's just a standard brush, you know? But I have the ability to know like what value range I'm living in by just pushing down, okay? And so what you guys tend to do, people don't have this sensibility, so they'll just pick one value and then they'll just kind of make it a little bit darker, like I was talking about earlier, right? <laughs> Because yep. they don't, they can't see the separation. Because they feel like this is 50 and then this is like 80 or whatever, or 20%, right? But it's far from the truth. If you look, it's like, it's just 20% difference. And it's not enough contrast. Like you're living like just in this range, you know? Where there's like all this range you can live in. You see that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so the best way to do that is to just do what I did. Just like try to paint a value. Guess what value it is. Like, let me do it right now. What value do you think this is? Oops. Hold on. What value do you think that is? I think it's 30%. 30% brightness? Yeah, I guess. Okay. What the? it's 82 percent oh but if we were to think about what you thought i think you were thinking like um, yeah i like think 30 percent from the light yeah you were 10 percent off okay so you were thinking more like 70 percent so this is what 70 percent looks like that's how off you were yeah and how do you manage the 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 light and shadow with the local values so that's the first problem. Can you okay. even just paint local values first, right? Okay. Uh -huh. Don't even worry about lighting until you can at least do this, okay? Okay. And then once you know how to do that, then now, remember I told you there's two parts. Now here's the second problem. Okay. So now that, now that you're a master, you can see, okay, I can make like a, a darker value. I can make a lighter value. And I have like this design for this character. Right, you're the best artist in the world. <coughs> Let's do something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's your design. Okay, there's no lighting on it. Which actually may give you a clue to um, well, that's weird. Um, which would give you a clue oh, cool. Yeah, right on. Let me just do this real fast. Oops. All right, which will give you a clue what I just did here, like how valuable just shapes are. Mm -hmm. right? Because just the shapes alone give us some sense of form, right? Okay, yeah. So having good shapes is pretty valuable. Anyway, so then you come in here and you'll just paint some really aggressive lighting. Pretty aggressive. Just hang in there with me. Yeah. 
I'm with you. Okay. And then we'll do some increased brightness. And then we'll just go ahead and turn this down a notch. My dog can probably hear your dog barking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the two are speaking of something. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is how you solve that problem. Oh, okay. Basically, what you see here is that I keep the values consistent by making the shadow value live on its own. And then I just turn it down, right? And man, this looks like it has more three-dimensionality to it. Okay? Yeah. But here's the problem that people run into whenever they paint. They over-exaggerate. So they'll, and they're inconsistent. See what that shadow layer does. So you'll do the same thing. You'll be painting the things and then you'll just be painting them in the shadows and then you're trying to correct it and look what's happening. Mm -hmm. Look what's happening. As you're correcting it, you're doing what? Uh, just guessing. Well, no, like what's happening? Look, look, look what's happening to uh, local values as you're trying to correct the lighting. It's disappearing, like it's yeah. solving, it's messing one with another. Right. And then what ends up happening sometimes is that people will over paint and add more lights. So that looks incorrect, right? You okay. Destroyed everything. Yeah. Because because they're not consistent. Because what this does is just follows the simple rule that every local value has their own light and mid and dark value. But we can keep it simpler than that. We can just say a light and dark value. So let's do that. Let's make three different values. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is dark enough. Okay, here we go. So let's make three different values. And then let's do something like this. We just create a shadow layer. And this is just me painting. <clears throat> this is just me painting like one dark like overlay on top of them. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing fancy. It's just the three values. But now I have a, a light and a dark. Okay? So essentially, let's take the light value, this right here. And let's go ahead and start like designing a shape of a character or something. And let's take this dark value as a local value. Let's take this midtone value as another local value. And let's just kind of create this. Right, let's just say that's what we've got. Okay? Okay. So, if I go to each value and start to paint them as I imagine the, the shadow would be, like this, for instance, this would all be in shadow according to what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Then this is the shadow value for this value. So go ahead and put that in there. And this is a shadow value for this. You see how that's working? Yeah. And it's working pretty consistently. And then that maybe will be hit by some light right there. See that? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You, you answered my question. <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah. so then let's take this value right here, the light value, and put it in the neck. So would I grab this value or the shadow value of the light value? The, the shadow value? Yeah, because of the, I'm saying that this is in shadow, right? Yeah. So then I'll do this, and it will look like it is part of that, especially if I connect it like that. Right? And let's say this comes up, up and around, like up and over. Or actually, let's do this. Like up and around like this, and then it connects back up this way. Then I'm like, okay, well, this is like all lit up until like maybe like right here. See that? Yeah. And all I did was just use this color swatch. But see what I've done is I've kept my values consistent. So now if we go back and look at this, this thing that I did here, that's all I did here too. I just made another layer that just controls my shadows because you could see that it was pretty challenging to try to paint in shadows yeah. in pretty random spots, right? But, but to know that, it makes you uh, have the ability to correct your painting. <clears throat> Knowing that you're picking a value, a light value here, so that way you can add like a rim lighting or whatever to this material, saying that there's a hint of light being splashed onto these. You understand? Yeah, I understand. All right. And how do you practice that? You just got to practice it. <laughs> okay. There's, there's, yeah. there's some stuff that you just can't get better at unless you just kind of just get in there and practice. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Including like the brush stuff that I was showing earlier. Like that's something like, like the ability to control your values. Like you just got to paint a lot. I can, like, I can tell you exactly how hard I'm pushing, but it won't matter, right? It's just like if you see somebody shooting three pointers, and they're really good at shooting like a, a you know a three point shot consistently. They can give you some tools and advice on how to get better at it, but just because they give you that advice doesn't mean that you're now able to do it. You have to still put in that work. Yeah. Uh, a great example of this is like if I were to tell you guys to get a stronger chest, like to have stronger uh, chest muscles, to do like several hundred push ups throughout a week. You guys will be, oh, okay, great. But if you don't do any push-ups, then you're not going to get any stronger. Like what I said is true, but it's not going to make you any stronger if you don't do anything. Yeah. Or sure. do very little. All right, Vitaly has a yeah, question. What's your question? Uh, yeah. Uh, while we are talking about volumes and this brush, uh, can I ask you where you can, in preferences, switch off and switch on this function? Is that you brush uh, have a different volume because uh, my brushes don't have such a function. Oh, okay. So if you don't have that, so I can tell you exactly. That's a technical question. It's really easy. So <clears throat> if your brush just does this and then you have to like control it by turning the opacity down by hand. No, no, it's have transfer soft, but it don't have different volumes uh, because of uh, when you push on the like, pen. I don't understand. If you have transfer, you have to have pen pressure on and flow jitter on. Do you have those on? Oh, maybe besides some of these uh, options. Um, there's also an icon on the toolbar that you can press that will do it to any brush. They'll turn them the pen pressure on? Yeah, yeah I don't have just uh, uh, on controls pen pressure. Yeah, now uh, I have it. On the brush toolbar at the top, the second to last one, I think, turns on. This one right here? Yeah. I mean, it's already on, so. I don't... Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if you just have like a static brush, that could just let's, a quick way to do it. Let's find out. You're All right. Liar. Wait, no, the other one. The other one. Next to opacity. My bad. But oh, this no, oh, yeah. my brush just don't became darker because of uh, just I push on it. I have the same. Yeah, I set pen pressure. And you push light and dark, it doesn't do this? No, it doesn't do this. What's your hardware? Because I know Microsoft issued an update recently that screwed this up for me also, and I have to do a weird like workaround. If you're using a PC and like a Wacom. Yeah, what, are, what is your hardware? That's a good question. Yeah, I just get it. I need to set uh, the 
two of the colors, you know, uh, this, what you have on the left, yeah, black and white. It's uh, set from this, yeah, 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 from these two colors. I had just uh, white and uh, light gray. That's why I can't reach such uh, differences in values. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now that you know. Yeah. Then you should yes. be you to be a master painter now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I, I will have one more question, very important, but okay. Well, someone. Yeah, other... I think Max has one. What's your Max? Yeah. Uh, what's your question, Max? What's your Max, Max? Um, so when um, I guess this might pertain to like deadlines or also homework in general, but mostly for once you're in your job, have you ever been in the position where you have to choose between spending more time on fewer pieces and less time on more pieces? And which is better, would you say? Wait, what? Like if, like, let's say you have a deadline to submit like 10 iterations uh -huh. and you're kind of running tight on time would you say it's better to spend more time on fewer and get not the 10 or get um, <coughs> spend less time on 10 like i uh, see yeah if if um if your client says that they need 10 then you got to do 10 okay but in most cases clients don't say stuff like that Alrighty. Okay. Uh -huh. they, they'll they'll just tell you to do like a lot, and and to that answer or to that you know, to answer that question in that framework, then yeah, you just do try to get the best quality. Okay. You know, yeah. so if if you if you were planning to try to get ten, but you feel like you can only do five, really good, then that's better. Yes. Awesome. And then, do you have any tips for I guess just painting quicker? and then getting out of blocks i guess yeah sure so creative blocks are a product of you just don't know shit <laughs> okay and so to get better at that you got to know more stuff yeah that's fair right yeah so that and that doesn't just mean like drawing that means like exploring um reading more going outside more experiencing things more these types of things you know what i mean yeah <clears throat> because if you just stay focused on um if you just stay focused on like just one set of like ideas then you're gonna keep regurgitating those same set of ideas does it make sense yeah so you need to expand what you know okay and that's that's really important thank you and, and uh one one Thing that i would say too that's really helpful is if whatever you're you're not good at like if you want to improve on speed for instance uh -huh. you have to you have to test yourself at speed so if you're really slow then you gotta put yourself in circumstances where you need to paint quicker make sense yeah uh and if and and if you don't know what I mean, like you just just time yourself. That's all. Just time yourself very often, and do it really uh, effectively. All right. Cool. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Very pendulous. No, I didn't. These haircuts are sick. All right, anyway. Well, this is pretty cool. Can I now ask a question? Yeah. Okay, uh, previously I was by one of your lesson. Oh, thank you. Share, and uh, there are, the, you put a lot of files in there like brush presets, tool presets, uh, hotkeys. And I just want to ask how to imply these things and how to save uh, my, uh, this. I, I just don't get how to use tool presets and uh, yeah, gotcha. where to find, uh, where to put this, uh, uh, this file, which you put in the your lesson. 
Can you show? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, in fact, you should just, these types of questions, you don't need to ask me. Because if you just Google, you, you'll, there's plenty of resources. Like, not, not to, to make you feel like uh, silly for asking these questions. I'm saying like, um, these types of things are actually really uh, easy to look up. That's all. And if it's like something that you looked up extensively and you can't find anything about it, then obviously I'll help you out. But, but basically you just load it right here. So you have tool, tool preset window. You go to window, mm -hmm. and then you open up tool presets. Mm -hmm. And then once it's out, open, then you just do this and you go load tool presets and then you look for the ones that you got. And the same thing with the brush presets, same thing for actions. You just go to the window tab and look for those windows so that way you can get to the, okay. the lines right here that allow you to, to put them in. And then okay. you can, and you can see right here, it says save tool presets and all that stuff right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. But the, a lot of those questions, yeah, can definitely be answered via yeah, Google. Yeah. All right. Feel free to ask any more questions, my friend. Oh, go ahead, Vitaly. I I don't think about questions, but I can show you, you the work which I made for nope. your lessons. Nope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, what 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 work? Uh, work which I made uh, when by your lesson. Yeah, when I copy your lesson. Oh, yeah. Um, if you want to show me any of that stuff, just submit it for next class and I'll take a look at it then. Oh, okay. I think yeah. you, yes. Yeah. What it will be. What uh, it will towards be. the end of the class, I do portfolio reviews. So anything that you want to show me that had nothing to do with our class, I oh. look at it then. Just so okay. that we, we keep the class focused on um, the work Most that you're doing. Yeah. yeah, the stuff that you're working on currently. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. I have one more question. I just, uh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I, you just say that we can ask any question. So any question, I'm just yes. interested. Uh, how many receive a professional artists such as you as Jama Jurabayev in mm. our per hour Wait, salary? What? Oh, how uh, much? How much do, do we make an hour? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that depends on who, right? So, for instance, uh, I think most people can charge around thirty to forty dollars an hour working for a studio. If you're working for in-house, then it could be much lower than that, or just around that price. But if you're doing freelance, definitely thirty to forty dollars an hour is pretty good. And then, <clears throat> if the more acclaim you get, like the more experience, the more skill that you have then <clears throat> you can ask for more. So I ask around between 100 to $150 an hour. That's my hourly rate. Jama, I would imagine, would be double that because he works in film. In film, they have a lot more money. Who? Jama, Wait. like you mentioned Jama. I don't uh, really know how much he makes, uh, but if I had to guess, it would be more, like maybe twice as much. Yeah, people in the industry, the more skill you have, um, you can make upwards of, uh, easily upwards of 150 to $250,000. U.S. dollars, whoa, a year. It's something yeah. incredible. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh -huh. People don't realize that, like, because our skill is really valued, you know. Yeah. Especially if you're really good at it, and and you provide a really consistent service. So whenever I work for clients, I usually do like a day rate of between five hundred to six hundred dollars uh, a day. And and sometimes that means I only work three to four hours that day, right? Yeah. Like sometimes two hours, right? I don't, maybe I don't even work that long. And so then that goes from like $200 an hour, my, my rate can be. But I don't work a lot. And so um, I just make up for that by charging a lot. And I think that's really important to understand, okay? Yeah. That the, the, the kinds of stuff that... <laughs> you think you're valued, you can totally charge people more money, it's, especially if you have more value and you have consistent quality. But with that being said, uh, 
yeah, you can level up to that. You don't have to like go straight into asking for that much money. You can, especially if you feel really nervous about it. <clears throat> I think people can ask for like somewhere between um, uh, $30 an hour to $40 an hour, I think is really reasonable. For our country, it's very, very expensive and a lot of money and nobody will pay you so, such money. Well, At least if they me. want something good, Yeah, for, for me, well, no one side pay such money, but yeah, when I will. But overseas, the world is globalizing, you know, yeah. meaning that you have access to other countries and their money. You got it? Yeah, yeah. You know, right yeah. now uh, in my country, we have... Uh, where, where where do you live? What country do you, are you in? What city of that country? Ukraine. Okay. Ukraine. Uh, so yeah, you guys are going through your own stuff right now. And I, uh, I think people have, like, as you said, not a lot of money be floating around. Um, <clears throat> so in the Ukraine, I, like I said, I'm sure there is people who don't have a lot of money, right? Yeah. But... <laughs> If you have access to um, studios in the States or even like in some of the uh, more industrialized countries, right? You could totally ask for that kind of money. And then living in the Ukraine with making that much money, you live really well, right? And yeah. that, that's, that's exactly right. Um, and a lot of countries, I'm not sure what the government policies are in Ukraine at the moment, but... A lot of countries are also really afraid of globalizing, you know, globalizing, yeah, know. meaning like reaching out to, yeah, yeah, I know, I understand all, all these okay. problems and topics. Yeah. And, and people get really upset about it. Um, but the reality is, uh, the reality is it's going to happen whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. And, and to have policies and thinking that is, like sovereign based, like border based is really naive. It's incredibly naive and very dangerous for your own uh, government's economy. Uh, at the moment, for instance, the president of America is, is a complete and other idiot. And he, he's trying to put into place a lot of these policies that are going to close borders, putting taxes and tariffs in place that are going to uh, slow down and stagnate uh, our global market, right? And we're going to feel the thunder in probably 2022. Uh, maybe even sooner, to be honest. <laughs> okay. But like around like, uh, it takes it takes about four to five years for these types of effects to really hit hard. You know? Yeah. Because it doesn't happen all at once. And what I mean by this is that, um, imagine that you own a company, okay? And you want to make the best products possible, right? And you want to do it for as cheap as you possibly can, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say Vitaly from uh, the Ukraine he says, I'll do it for $50 an hour. And you're just as good as, let's say, um, let's say me. And I'm asking for $200 an hour, right? But you're just as good as I am in this yeah, hypothetical. I understand what are you talking about. <laughs> right? So you're going you're gonna to take that job. Right? Most people understand this. Once you put it on paper, everybody gets it. Like, if you're in control, are you really going to be like, well, I'm going to keep those American jobs. I'm going to hire Anthony Jones, right? Or are you going to hire the person who's going to do just as well for that lower cost. And the thing is, like I said, $40 an hour for you might almost be like making $200 an hour, you know, right? For where you live, like $200 an hour for me is so I can live where I live, you know? Yeah. I don't need that much money. I really don't. But if I want to keep living in sunny California and Irvine, California, right? Then I got to make that much money, you know? And uh, me and my wife have already talked about moving because we already realized like I can move and make just as much money and then that money will have more value, right? We're already wise to this idea. And so... Where do you live? 
No. Yeah, we could we could live we can move to Ukraine. I could still do the work I do. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you get it? Like I don't need to live in California. Do you understand? But yeah. anyway, my point is that's the point. Like globalization, right? And so then um, you have to understand this is and this is true for all of you guys that um when people say they're taking our jobs right you hear this all the time they taking our jobs they took our jobs <laughs> right like this this idea of like like the foreigners are coming in like they're just coming in and taking all these jobs from all these hard-working americans um the reality is no these people are also fucking hard-working in fact the reality is they're probably more hard-working than you are you know and so you have to understand the market is globalizing. And this is not just for Americans. This is for everybody. You have to have a skill that has to have value. Okay. And then that value will allow you to charge more. You understand me? Yeah. Regardless of the global market. Does it make sense? Because you are on the frontier of what people want. Make sense? Absolutely. And so that's why I focus a lot of my time and attention whenever talking about money and like quality of your work. I always encourage people to, to try to be amongst the best artists in the industry. You don't have to be the best, but just be amongst them, you know, living amongst the, the giants in this industry. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to start to make the kind of money that you think you deserve. Okay. And, and it's not as hard as you think. There's a lot more opportunities now than there were before, right? And so keep that in mind. And yeah, you, you might say, well, you know, the Ukraine this, Ukraine that. Like, sure, I believe you. But remember when I was talking earlier, like whatever your reality is, is most likely going to be true for you, even if it's not true, right? I'm sure there's some great Ukraine artists who've left or even stayed in the Ukraine and make a great living wage. Okay. Yeah, I knew some such yeah. guys. Who so, so it's, work for Marvel and other companies. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not trying to say that it's gonna. It's easier for you. It's obviously easier for me. I live in the heart of the industry, right? That's no yeah. doubt. I'm not delusional. I understand that. But I'm just trying to say it's not impossible, and it's it's become easier over time for people like you, right? And it's only going to get easier. No policy is going to prevent this from happening. People are always going to still, because even if they put these large, you know, tax hurdles to hiring people abroad, like if the tax hurdle added another, like I have to pay like double whatever I had to pay you, like if that's the taxes, let's say if I hire work from outside the country, I have to pay whatever they, they charged, I have to pay that 100%. So if you're $40 an hour, that's actually going to cost me $80 an hour. That's still cheaper than the two hundred dollar Anthony Jones. You get it? Get it? Mm -hmm. Like the the taxes would be have to be incredibly high for them to finally be like, all right, well, I guess we have to buy or we have to pay for people in our country. You know, that's why you must live to go to Thailand and. <laughs> oh, like... dude! Yeah, I was thinking about moving on a, to like an island. <laughs> just, I just get. I'm waiting for uh, Elon Musk to um, um, make the internet free for everybody. He's working on that right now. Yeah, and Facebook too. Yeah, well, I think Musk might do it before them. And, um, but whoever does, it doesn't matter, right? Um, yeah. Then I, I literally could live anywhere. I'll just sign up for that internet and I'll just move and live on a like island. <laughs> I'll live on just like some remote island. I'll buy an island. You can move to Ukraine. We have a very good internet. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know anything about Ukraine, so I have to talk to my wife about that. But but my point is, is there's so many places that have good internet that are not just in. Uh, there's a lot of places in uh, in the UK, you know, in Western Europe, yeah. that have a lot of like they're like they have even better internet than us here in the states. They have really crazy good internet. But my point is, is that uh, my point is that like that's that's the reality, you know? So don't be too caught up with like where you live too much. But at the same time, you know, understand where you live and the economy and social programs that are available to you. So, anyway. yeah.
Thank you for answering. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Can you guys yes, still I see have. my screen? Can you guys still see my screen? Yeah, I yes. can see your screen. Okay, cool. Dagu. Yeah, actually, I have a question about your artistic journey. Uh, sure. How come? How you become uh, an artist? When? Where was the moment you decided to do art for a living? That's an open question because it's always inspiring. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> I uh, I originally started out working like regular jobs. I worked like the Gap, Old Navy, and then I moved to uh, working as a plumber. And that was when I realized that I don't want to I don't want to do this stuff anymore. Yeah, really wanted a real career. And so then that's when I went and uh, I uh, went to school. I tried to find a school to go to. And I went, originally I went to like DeVry University, which is a joke. And I left that school. It's an artistic school. No, it's just a joke school. (laughs) (laughs) So I I left and then I found the Art Institute. I went there instead. And they're like, yeah, you can come in, dude. It's fine. And so I went and um, that was also kind of a joke school, but you know, I learned a lot from my friends that I made there. So it's not too much of a joke. At least I made really good friends and I had a real path ahead of me. And that's when I met one of my best friends um, at the time, uh, Edgar, who's an amazing painter. And he introduced to me digital painting. And uh, once I saw that, then I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So it wasn't you know? that school who uh, <clears throat> inspired you, but it, the it was the person. You met. Yeah, it was the yeah. person. Yeah, and so then I, I saw him painting, and I was like, I want to do that. And so then from there on out, I decided to just become uh, an artist. And I saw the different kinds of art jobs you can have. Then I realized I wanted to be a character concept artist. And I just decided that's what I wanted to do. And so once I decided that, I just started doing it. Yeah. You know? And um, and the rest is history. And I literally just, like, I started, like, around 2007. Okay? And I had that okay. thought. So I've been at it almost 11 years. Right? And I was just kind of like, that's what I want to do. And I just kept with it for those 11 years. And only in the last two years have I decided to change my new passion to, to game development. Yeah. So now I'm making, trying to make games from start to finish. So this is like helping me. This, this right here is me trying to get better and more comfortable with the Afrofuturism stuff and trying to create something that's a little bit more um, closer to what I think I can try to do in 3D. I realize this needs to be simpler, so I'm going to make it simpler. Anyway. No, I'm, I'm asking about that school because uh, me too, I was, uh, uh, I was in an artistic school. It's a school of mm-hmm. fine arts in Krakow. And it's a very traditional school and, uh, you know, with all my hobbies and interests, I couldn't really find my place. Because uh, for comics and uh, movies I liked, they were, they, they was really uh, skeptical about it, uh-huh. and uh, and I have an impression to lose five years of that school, and after that five years, I really decided I realized that I can uh, make art I love for a living. And that's my journey started. So uh, I was uh, interested uh, if there is a school, uh, I don't know, with a profile profile for games or for movies uh, you, you went or... Because it's always uh, some kind of uh, shows you make your own and you have to be, uh, you have to study yourself. It's not really a school who give you uh, education in art in my opinion <laughs> yeah uh see you later max 
<clears throat> yeah, so I think um, I think that art um, and actually many other uh, many other uh, career paths can be learned um, outside of school. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of learning on your own. Yeah. And one of the things that I've discovered, uh, one of the things that I've learned is that a lot of what people um, don't get from school, what it is that you don't get is you get that genuine expertise. Uh, because it's really hard to find talented educators that will sit day in day out to teach people yeah stuff. that's true <laughs> they prefer to do your uh, their own stuff than develop their self not to yeah. stay the same place with uh, the same education <laughs> yeah and so uh, what i'm trying to say is that um that when you go and learn on your own what are the values of that method right yeah. is that you can look for the information that you need at that moment, yeah. right? And so one of the things that's wrong with like formal education uh, these days, I'm gonna stop right here so I can just talk a little bit, <clears throat> is because their, their incentive is, their incentive is not education anymore. It's really mostly focused on attendance. How many more people can we get going to school? Yeah. It doesn't even matter if you graduate. In fact, they like that you stay in school longer because they make more money. Um, yeah. but, but even the more social um, driven s countries that have better social programs, like with free education, um, they, they have an opportunity and they've been actually fixing a lot of this. But sometimes it's still a problem that if everybody goes to school, you still don't create opportunities for people just because you teach them a skill. You know, you have to, you have to realize that working for a company is not necessarily what everybody's ideals are. Maybe some people are the ones who will make companies. Maybe people want to be creative and create their own stuff, right? And there's more and more tools and technology that's growing and rapidly. And so schools have this problem of like infrastructure. Like how do you have this whole infrastructure built a certain way adapt to this new type of education right and it's just really hard especially if you have hundreds if not thousands of employees to pay for then to just all of a sudden change the infrastructure have all your teachers learn a new way to teach because they found there's a better way to do it throw out the old and with the new kind of thing you know yeah. it's extremely challenging to to pull off you understand yeah. and so i don't blame the schools i get it but that's why you have to put more money in there. You have to put more money to train new teachers, to train the old ones, to build in the new systems. Hold on, let me yell at my dog. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. All right. I yell at Be quiet. It's <laughs> like, <be> quiet. <laughs> no, we listen. <laughs> yeah. And the oh. problem is really with the teachers. When the teacher are, feels very comfortable with his own uh, skills, I mean, yeah. it's good to be comfortable with your skill, but they don't try to teach themselves uh, something new. And the world is the world is changing. So yes, really the world is changing. Absolutely, that's the that's one thing that you can you can count on. Never stopping. You know, yeah. change and you're right you're absolutely right and so um luckily for you there's plenty of resources and information all around the internet the internet is a godsend when it comes to information and once you realize that you you will find that you're you're really indestructible okay yeah. and so keep that in mind but i usually like i said said before try to help people understand that a lot of what they think they um, like a lot of what they think they, they need to know, like 
can be learned and taught on the internet. I mean, think about what's, what's happening right now. You guys are taking a class with me, right? Like yeah. that, that's just really unheard of, you know, and just not too long ago in, in the past. Yeah. Right. And that's because you guys have access to um, the internet. You guys have access to my mentorship. And because of that, you guys are able to come in here and uh, learn the types of things you guys want to learn. You know, and that's really powerful. That's really powerful stuff. And <clears throat> one thing that I would say uh, about the solution to this problem is, yeah, just putting some time and effort into your own education. Because even when I went to this school, one thing uh, remained true. I still, um, I still found a way to learn things on my own. Like they, they had concept art as an elective meaning that like you didn't need to take it to graduate and i was like that's what i want to do so they were like basically saying a job that i wanted was not even a real job <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know and i'm like and they but they the the, the irony is that the, the the school knows that it's a real job they just for whatever reason don't um uh, train it effectively because they also realize it's a very hard job right it's yeah, a hard but- job to get and but that's not the way you're supposed to teach you're supposed to give guidance and realistic expectations to your students teach them that yeah teach them that they're not good enough and what they can do to get good enough you know one of the things that happened um a lot when i was working uh or when i was working on trying to become a concept artist is that people would constantly tell me they'll tell me stuff like oh but becoming a concept artist is really hard and i said i know so what can I do to become a better concept artist? And they would just be like, but it's hard. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. <laughs> I don't care. You know, uh, I was working on game development recently, right? And someone yeah. told me, it's like, oh, but there's a lot of competition. And yeah. I'm like, I know. But there is, yeah. <laughs> That's always true. It doesn't change <laughs> that I want to learn it. Oh, what? There's competition? Oh, never mind. I'm out of this. Yeah. Yep, never mind. I was wrong. I should have not pursued this. I didn't realize it was hard. You know? It's yeah. it's foolish. It's not a smart way of approaching anything. I think being realistic is, is really uh smart, right? Like, okay, is it easy and how easy is it or how challenging is it? Like, do I have yeah. to get a work visa? Do I have to uh learn certain programming things, you know? Is it like what are my expectations in the challenge, right? Yeah. And and the reality is that I am cap- totally capable and have access to all this technology, so I can totally learn it. So why not learn it? You know? Yeah, that's the easy way to procrastinate, just to say, uh, to, to, um, you can just uh, tell yourself that, okay, it's difficult, so I will not begin because the risk is too high and there is no such thing. Uh, there's on, on, always a risk. Yeah. Whatever you start, or whatever counts, there is always a risk. Absolutely. But it's really a, in my opinion, it's really a problem of education in uh, in public school also. Then you, uh, you, if you if you can get a high note, they consider uh, that you are not good student student. Because you don't have a high note and how yeah <laughs> yeah so I don't education. <laughs> yeah that's why I don't grade um I don't grade people in my classes because either you did the work or you didn't and um either you did it on time the tally <laughs> or you did it right it's really it's really that simple <laughs> it really is that simple you know. And, and, and the sooner people understand that, uh, the better, because, you know, when you look, think about it like a, a classroom setting, which don't get me wrong, I think there's a, there's a, there's a merit to having grades, right? But, uh, I think that there's something more important to be taught. Like, can someone perform consistently, um, a certain task, right? And, and with grades, the problem with grades is that they let people they let people through with mediocre grades. Meaning like if you have a C, then you can move on to the next grade, 
like the next part of the, the school, right? But in the real world, if you have a job and you get like, let's say an av- if you do like, let's say we're working on a movie and you do average work and we need not average, we need extraordinary, and you did average, then I'm like, okay, well, you got to do it again. It's not like, oh, well, you know what? You get a C for effort. Good job. Next time you'll do better. No, like, no, you, you better make this an A or you're going to get fired. And that mentality needs to be taught. You need to understand that. I don't think that, um, I don't think that the, the way that people teach too is it's, it's a little backwards. They, um, they focus too much time and effort on skill-based stuff versus um, like creative or more like, uh, like larger value things. Like think having more uh, of, a, of an ability to push beyond what people expect Hmm. and because that because because of that a lot of people who have jobs that can be easily replaced are replaced instead of teaching people how to do things actually (coughs) all right any other questions moving on now good question or i think you had just more about like a you wanted to know more about my progress my life but anyway (laughs) good conversation Go ahead. Someone to say something. Oh yeah. So I have a question. So, um, do you have any advice for like networking yourself as an artist and like getting into contact with industry artists and staying in contact with industry artists? I do. Just sell your body, and then, <laughs> and then you'll do it. it you'll, that easy. <laughs> and that's it. Just sell your body, and then you'll get a job in the industry. Um, uh, I'm just kidding. Um, you just gotta put yourself out there. You, you have to go out and meet people often. Uh, you can do it digitally. You can do it uh, physically, like go to events, right? You, you've heard this expression before on positive, right? Like of just going out and networking. But yeah. it's because it's true. You know, there's no, there's no need to complicate it, Okay when you go out and make friends with people in the, in the real world, it pays off, man. Like, let me, let me give you an example of thinking or like a, a, a narrative and you tell me which is the best scenario. I mean, let's just think about it logically. Let's not even, um, let's not even flirt with any other, um, any other ideas. This is like, keep it really simple. And I'm going to illustrate it too, actually. So in scenario one, in scenario one, or scenario A, we have a really good artist. It's got like amazing work, right? Scenario B, this person, oh yeah, and they know they have no friends. Or like nobody knows about their work, okay? And then we have a person who is, has, you know, not that good of work, okay? But has thousands of friends, okay? And then scenario C, I don't know why this person's a little more jolly, but whatever. This person has amazing work and also a thousand friends. Who do you think has the most opportunity? A, B, or C? C, C, obviously, right? Of course. Of course, right? There's not, there's no question about it, but here's a, here's a, here's another question. Let's imagine that you're let's let's put a wall between c now so c doesn't exist all right and you are um you're a recruiter and you're looking to just hire an artist okay who do you think has a better chance of getting a job between a and b b of course b because 
because nobody knows about A. Exactly. It's not a matter. It's not a matter that that person is good because nobody can find them. If that person um, had somebody know of them, then yes, then they would be the obvious choice between A and B, wouldn't they? Right. So I'm making a strong point that even if you have kind of mediocre work, if you have a really good amount of friends. Friends want to work with friends. You understand? And so that's why I always encourage people to go to events, uh, go to workshops, talk to people online, and create your own communities. We were talking about the Level Up guys, right? The Polish bastards. Those two, they were not very good when they were interviewing artists. They that that was their strategy. Their strategy was look, we're gonna we're trying to get good at this art stuff. But in the meanwhile, we're going to interview all the best people in, in, the, in the industry, right? And they did that. And as that was going on, they learned so much from these people. And they also got really good. And now they're the kinds of people that people want to interview, right? Yeah. And they got so good that they can't even run Level Up anymore because now they are actual badass concept artists. You understand? Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> so two things right happened. Here. Two things happened. One they were networking on their own, you know, their own way. And with that network, they made a lot of friends in the industry, both from hosting these level of stuff. People knew them for just that. And then they also got good. So they ended up becoming C. They started off as B and eventually becoming C. When you don't share your work and you just focus only on your work, that's great. But eventually you got to talk to somebody, right? And you have to, you have to invest. That's a good investment travel if you need to save that money you know yeah. go to these big events you'll see what i mean if you haven't gone already you'll know right away what i mean uh, so like uh i network quite often like that's why i was asking this question like i go okay, to cool. I, I email people and stuff but I, I think my issue is like it's really a like getting in contact with people online is super hard and b staying in contact with a lot of people is even harder for me at least you know so it's like, do you have any advice on like that aspect of it? What's so hard about it? Explain to me. Well, like, for example, uh, I reached out to you like four months ago for mm-hmm. an interview and I was not able to get in contact with you. Oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> you know, so it's stuff like that, you know, it's like sometimes it's really hard to, to get in contact with people who have like a lot of like internet notoriety. You know what I mean? You're right. I feel like it just devolves into like, it feels like spam sometimes. It never feels like spam. I didn't feel like no spam because I didn't even see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, and so what do you do? You just got to find another way. What did you do? How did you try to reach out to me? I sent you a message on ArtStation and then I contacted you through your website. Okay. Via email? Uh, I think so. All right. It was, a, it was a while ago, but I definitely remember sending you a message on ArtStation. Yeah. My ArtStation definitely gets spammed and it's hard for me to keep track of that. But you know what, though? I might have responded to you. Um, I might have not, right? (laughs) And so for me, I would say don't stop. Keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why should it be easy? Well, I'm not saying it should be easy. I'm just Uh seeing if there's a better avenue that I'm not aware of. No, it's pretty simple. You're doing it right. Okay. I mean, what else could there be? Going to people's houses? I don't think that's ideal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go up. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think uh, you found a solution somehow. You took yeah. my class. Yeah, now I'm yeah. talking to you, right? Yeah, it worked out. So you figured something out, and now you do know me. Yeah. Even more so than you would have if you interviewed me, because you invested in my uh, my classes. So I usually invest back into my students. I'm, I take. Uh, I hang out with my students quite often and I, I still talk to them from time to time whenever they ask me questions. That's, that's really awesome. Yeah. It's um, cool. And so, and so you have to understand that what you did um, didn't work for me, but it eventually still worked out because you took the class. Yeah. Uh, another I, I, question is like, well, who else were you trying to reach? And did you not reach anybody else? Well, I, I actually, so like, uh, I'm, I'm a university student. I go to SCAD. So we have to do oh, okay. like a, a networking assignment where we reach out to someone and get an interview. And uh, I think I reached out to, to over 40 people and I got one response. Oh, yeah. Who responded? Uh, his name's uh, Dominic Mayer. He's a, he's a German 
uh, concept artist who works on a lot of board game stuff. His art's really, really cool. He's pretty, he's like a really awesome art station artist. Awesome. Yeah. So you got somebody. Yeah, he's really awesome. Can you post uh, later the link to his art station on the Skype? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me do that real quick. Thanks. Yeah. So you get the, you figured it out and that's great because then guess what when people say hey you know um like when you go into the future and people ask you like what you did you would tell them all the stuff that you just did that's exactly yep. right and so i think the best way is like i just said earlier is just going to events <laughs> and yeah. actually because then they're, like if you walked up to me and said hello it's hard to ignore you then isn't it Oh yeah, you have it's to be much, very diligent about it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 much it's much easier to me to just ignore like a notification on Art Center. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Art Station. Than it is to like have someone walk straight up to me and be like, "Hey, man, I'm a fan, and uh, I want to talk to you." And I'm like, All right. Yeah, I'm really, I, I really have a, um, I have an experience in to networking, so I think I can afford something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, only experience. Yeah, I, w I was like taking a workshop with some with uh, with a guy that do traditional animation. His name is Eric Trang and works in in The Simpsons. Okay. And he came to Guatemala and do a workshop. I invested in the workshop, and then he 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 was like, "Oh, I want to 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 speak with all of you and and I show and show I show to to him uh, my portfolio." And since then, I've been working with them. Yeah, I was like, okay, uh, uh, I like your portfolio. I want to work with you. And I'm, I'm working with him like via Skype. And he paid me via Zoom and things like that. So, yeah, the thing that Anthony said is uh, very important. Like, go outside and uh, meet people. You never know with people you can work with. Visiting, attending events or workshops with uh, people that works in different in industries. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome though. That's really cool. Yeah, especially if your work's good, it makes it even easier. <laughs> I had a student, <laughs> I had a student who um, was not going to go to to an event called uh, the Trojan Horse is a Unicorn. It's THU. It's a pretty big yeah. event. Mm -hmm. And I told him to go, and he was just like, "Yeah, but I don't know." Like, it's, it's a lot of money, and uh, I don't have anywhere to stay. I was like, well, you can stay with the other Robo Pencil students because there's a bunch of them going. So you can stay with them. I can ask them. And he's like, yeah, but the tickets are already sold out, and I don't have money. And I was like, if I can get you a ticket, will you go? Like, would you pay for it and go? And he said, yeah. Hmm. He's like, uh, yeah, sure, why not? You know? And I was like, all right. So then I got him. I talked to Andre himself, and Andre's like, I got one extra ticket. I'll give it to him. And so he bought it from him. He went to the event. Uh, he, he, you know, he borrowed money from, I think, his mom so he can get the tickets and all that stuff fly out there. <clears throat> he went, and it changed his life, he told me. Hmm. And uh, he had a job opportunity with CG, CG oh, that's Project. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And it happens more often than you think, especially, like I said, especially if you have good work. If you're working, you have a, like he had a really good portfolio. That's why I told him, I really encouraged him to go. I was like, the worst case scenario, you're going to be told what you need to do to improve and make a lot of friends, right? Yeah. And he got the best case scenario. He made a lot of friends and learned what he needed to do to improve and he got a job, okay? And I had another student who went who did not have a good portfolio. And they submitted for like this, uh, uh, there was like kind of like a, um, I don't know how to say this, but they, they, they basically submitted to this thing where they have like, um, like contests. Yeah. And you have to submit to the contest to even, you know, compete. And his work was not good enough. And he applied and he, it wasn't good enough. And they told him that it wasn't. And he was so frustrated and so distraught. He emailed me and he messaged me. He's just like, freaking out he's like oh it's the worst i suck i don't even want to go anymore and i was like what i was like wait a minute did you buy a ticket already and you have a hotel and all that stuff he's like yeah but i don't know i'm thinking about getting a refund and i said you're a fool man 
you're you're being really stupid <laughs> i was like like what in what world did you ever think that being rejected was never going to happen he's like i never taught you that <laughs> right you guys heard what i said earlier if you don't do a good job you don't do a good job this is how it is right yeah. Yeah. You know, in my class, I don't like, you know, slap you guys across your face super hard when you guys are doing work because I know everybody's at different stages. So I try to keep the the homework relative to whatever your skills at, right? Yeah. And it's really helpful. That's what my that's why I have a, a high turnout rate for my student homework. Most of you guys will keep turning in homework to the end of the class, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I at no point will I ever give you guys delusions you know that you guys are capable of things you're not and i i told him that like don't i remember telling him specifically that he was not there you know and i was like you you should have already known what i don't know what made you think that was different and he was a scientist he's actually like a biologist i think and i was like when you do an experiment and you fail like you have a hypothesis you put together the the tests and the tests fail do you say well that's it i don't know anything like this doesn't work Right, like not not even in your own trade, do you think that's true? Right, you yeah. you keep trying, right? Yeah. Until you find the results that you're looking for. And he was like, "Ah, oh, man, you're right. Okay, I'll go." He's, like, I don't know what I was thinking. And I was like, "Yeah, man, you just got a little bit of like personal attack on yourself for whatever reason. Like, I assure you, you weren't the only one rejected. And and I'll tell you right now, you're not going to be the only one that was rejected. That's going to be going." Plenty of people are still going to go, even though they were rejected. So he went, and he brought his portfolio with him, and again, it changed his life. And he made a lot of good connections. He talked with Eduardo from Riot, the place he wanted to work with, oh, and yeah. he gave him great feedback. Yeah, he gave him really good feedback, and he came back supercharged and incredibly inspired. And uh, he, he, t- he wrote me, he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I even thought about not going. You know? And I was yeah. like, yeah, dude, you were really, really stupid. <laughs> And so that's what events do, man. Some events are really like helpful. Some events aren't. Sometimes you go to an event and it's just kind of nothing's there, right? Yeah, that, that kind but, of happened to me. I was at, recently at like PAX East and I was like talking to a lot of people. There weren't a lot of artists there and the ones that were didn't want to do anything. I did get in contact with someone from Atlas Board Games though, which is cool. See, but, so even yeah. even at the worst <laughs> scenario, you still have like a contact. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you, because this is hard to deny like in person re- interaction, right? Yeah. And so you can tell like I'm very personal person. I'm very charismatic. So yeah. even at like a place there's nothing going on, I can still make my magic work. Um, when um, my uh, wife <laughs> was dropping our daughter off at school, and I was like, "You got to make friends with some of the parents." And she's like, yeah, I don't know. Some of the parents, I don't know. And I'm like, all right. Because my wife's very disagreeable, which is what I love about her, right? <laughs> but I know that's, that's how she is. So, all right, I'll do it. So I went there, and I made, like, friends with all the moms and all the, like, the parents. And then, like, uh, now um, we're, like, really best friends with some of these parents. And my wife was even saying, like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe, like, like now I love these people. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. And... And I, I just literally went up to them and I was like, hey, our kids seem to get along. I think it'd be a good idea for our, us to all hang out. And they're just like, oh, yeah, sure. And I was like, yeah, let's get our numbers to set up a play date, get the kids to hang out. I love that. And I was like, hey, where do you guys live? Oh, we live over here. And I was like, oh, we do too. And then we just became friends and really good friends. And I, 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 I find a lot of value in that. In fact, I think a lot of the reason why I've – like when I got my first jobs in the industry, I think a lot of the reason why was not because I was good, was because I was really uh, friendly. Yeah. Okay. And I made a lot of friends. A lot of people wanted to just work with me because of just who I was. And that's why I always say make friends, right? Yeah. Not network, right? It's, it is networking, right? That's technically what you're doing. But if you think of it as making friends, not networking, that's a better strategy. Because networking would also mean that, like, if you run into, like, an art director that's a complete other idiot and just treats you like trash, you know? Yeah. Networking would say you should make friends with this person even though you despise them. Okay? Like, you go up to them, you show them your portfolio, and they're like, oh, my God, this stuff is stupid, man. (laughs) You're stupid. And they look (laughs) at you in the face, and they spit in your face, (laughs) and you're like, oh. 
<laughs> and then you still like, you know, suck up to them. I would say that's stupid. That's not a good strategy. Because let's say you do eventually do good work that could work for this person. They're going to be your art director. You're going to hate it. <laughs> okay. And so it's best to just make friends. So if you make friends with an art director who's cool, then awesome. Great scenario, right? If you meet yeah. an art director that's terrible or like a recruiter or whatever, and you don't like these people, then, you know, you know, just say maybe it's not the whole company, but if you were talking to an art director and they treat you like trash, then you're most likely going to work underneath them. So you might want to avoid that. But a, re yeah. a recruiter, a bad recruiter, you, you, that, that might just be one bad apple, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's best to think about it as making friends because you, maybe one day you're hanging out with, you know, Vitaly, right? In this class, yep. like, you make friends with Vitaly. Vitaly right now is not working. He's not doing a lot of stuff, but he's a cool guy. You guys get along. You guys talk a lot on Skype or uh, Google Hangouts or Discord, whatever, right? And you just become really good friends. And then one day Vitaly becomes an art director for I, a big company. You know I mean, what I mean? <laughs> it could happen. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't if you keep pa painting. Most of you guys, this will be true, right? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing stopping you other than if you just stop painting. And so you see, you see the pattern here. Eventually he's going to be a rock star or, or vice versa. And since you guys were friends because of no consequence of a career path, right? You're just, just because you guys just get along. You see my point? Yeah, I got you. Like that's, that's investing in, in friendships. That's what it's more valuable because with time, those friendships will, will show more value uh, in an honest and earnest way. Make sense? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. And that's why I say it's important to make friends, not network. Networking, in essence, you're making friends. You should be trying doing that. You get my point? But if you think about it as, hey, this person's kind of a jerk face, then don't be friends with them. Okay? Don't do it just because they happen to be working at like a really good company or they're a really notor notarized artist. I can name two artists who are like this that are tr truly terrible people. And Ooh. they... Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you because it's unprofessional, <laughs> but they're truly terrible and I stay away from them. I don't promote anything that they do because I don't think they deserve it, but I don't let them, I don't let people know because I don't think being, being an asshole is not illegal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and, and it's nothing that I want to get into, right? I don't think that they should get, you know, the amount of hatred if they, people found out the kind of stuff that they said and did. I don't think it's, it's just be too much drama, right? Yeah. But I personally saw that and experienced it and realized that these are people I just need to stay away from, right? Yeah. And they're really, and one of them is like one of the most popular and most respected artists in the, in the industry. Oh, you understand? That, now I really want to know who yeah. it is. <laughs> so I would rather you experience on your own because I, I don't need to tell you. you, people will just generally experience it. And sometimes they'll like talk to me after class or they, Hey, is it this person? I'm like, yep. Like, oh man, I knew it. <laughs> Cause they'll, they'll run into these people in person and then they'll see it for themselves. And so I don't need to say anything. I'll just let it happen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, uh, but it, I think it is unprofessional if I were to just put them on blast. Okay. Because yep. like I said, unless they did something truly terrible, right? Like they hurt somebody, you know, like physically or they're like really putting people in danger or they were really malicious with yep. their behavior, then then I would be like, okay, you know, this needs to be said, right? But if they're like generally just not a cool person, then uh, that's fine. They can just keep that to themselves. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, I even tell my students, if you feel like you're not a people person, then try to work freelance <laughs> <laughs> because there's nothing wrong with it. Really, there really isn't anything wrong with it other than socially, right? Because most people don't like to hang out with assholes, you know? But, yeah. but if you're not hurting anybody, right? Like, like, for instance, Donald Trump is our president, and I don't mind who he was before he was president. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. think... He could have been who he was, and it was kind of it was fine. Like I watched Celebrity Apprentice; I love that show, right? Yeah. But once he's become president, and he's like doubling down on bombing of Syria, you know, and he's putting legislation, and like literally the latest interview he had at Fox and Friends, he he's completely delusional, and he's old man with dementia, dude. This is dangerous, <laughs> man. People's lives are dying; like people are literally dying. Yeah. You know more yeah. than they would have right there have been two uh, extremely deadly syrian gas attacks under his presidency right yep and i think a lot of that has to do with because they know they can manipulate him 
I don't know who that like he bombs her without any investigation. What a fucking idiot! And you know, and don't get me wrong, like I, I don't think the some of our previous presidents were any better. It's just that he's so blatantly, obviously, so stupid and crazy. Yeah, and it's just like it's really dangerous. And so my point is, is that that is a great example of like, if he was not, if he was just running his own business and fucking people over in a different way, you know, that, you know, it's a little bit more forgivable. <laughs> okay. And so some of these artists, I feel the same way. Like they, they're not doing anything that is uh, putting in a, other people into any real danger. Make sense. Yeah. I got you. And so I don't really think they need to be exploited and destroyed because I think that's unnecessary. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, I highly encourage you guys just make friends with people, uh, including your classmates. You have you have a dozen be- or several people in this class that you can make friends with. You know, oh, yeah. and we're I've... all hanging out in a Discord server. Perfect. See, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. We're hanging out. All right, but I'm gonna go now. So, any more questions you guys may have, just hold on to them for uh, for next week. All right, you guys have a okay. great weekend. Hang out, Thank talk. Thank you. Talk Thank to you. you guys soon. Peace good out. Good weekend to you too. Yep, and have a great day, guys. Later. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.